Goedemiddag meneer, Kelam 713. We are passing flight level 137 for flight level 90. One bond, so many viviri. One tree, so many leaves. Suriname, a mystical and immense country. A country with so many secrets crying out to be discovered, or perhaps not. Suriname consists of 80% of tropical rainforest, situated in the largest district, Sipaliwini. This is also the home of the central Suriname Nature Reserve, which is on UNESCO's World Heritage List and is one of the most unspoiled parts of the Amazon region. It would appear from historic finds that the first Indians came to Suriname around 10,000 years ago. Since they were the original inhabitants, nowadays they're known as the indigenous population. It's hardly surprising that Surinamers talk of their tropical rainforest as the beating heart of the Amazon. Suriname lies in the northern coastal region of South America on the Atlantic Ocean. To the west, it borders on Guiana, to the east on French Guiana, and in the south on Brazil. The coast road runs from east to west. It lies 250 kilometers from the equator, and with its 160,000 square kilometers, it's four times the size of Holland, and 52 times smaller than neighboring Brazil. Suriname's location gives it a tropical climate. During the day, the temperature averages 30 degrees Celsius, falling at night to around 24 degrees. Prolonged downpours are infrequent, but when it does rain, the showers are heavy but short-lived. The tropical rainy climate blesses the country with incredibly luxuriant vegetation, which is home to a wealth of exotic and unusual animal species. The coast of Suriname is just as unspoiled as the interior of the country. There's a wide range of leisure activities to be enjoyed at the coast and on the many rivers and coves, ideal for both the adventurer as well as for the sun worshipper. European colonists first settled in Suriname in the 16th century. In their wake came merchants, officials and missionaries, and settlements soon sprung up. After the abolition of slavery, Many Asian contract workers, including Chinese, Indians, and Javanese, were brought to Suriname. Often as not, they stayed on and settled in Suriname once their contract was ended. Together with the original inhabitants, they now form a melting pot of cultures and religions. Suriname was part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands and gained its independence in 1975. Every year on the 25th of November, the Surinamese gather at Independence Square to celebrate the occasion. The nearly half million inhabitants of Suriname find it the most normal thing in the world to be part of a multi-ethnic, multicultural and multi-religious society. The coffin bearers pay their last respects to the dead by misleading the evil spirit, by dancing their way to the graveyard, even taking detours so that the evil spirit can't find its way back again. Suriname has 10 districts. At the mouth of the Suriname River lies the capital Paramaribo, in the district of the same name. The name Paramaribo probably comes from the name of a former Indian village, Parmurbo. In the 17th century, Dutch merchants built a trading settlement here that has grown to become the Paramaribo of today. In spite of its fortifications, the Dutch were unable to prevent Paramaribo falling into British hands. The Treaty of Breda, signed between the Dutch and the English, led to New Amsterdam, the New York of today, being handed over to the British, while Suriname became a Dutch colony. Can you imagine what Parimaribo would have looked like today if the treaty had never gone through? UNESCO has placed Parimaribo's historical town center on its World Heritage List. The typical buildings are a wonderful melting pot of Dutch architecture down through the ages, with traditional materials, influences, and building techniques. Naturally, the best way to really get to know all about the town and its history is to simply take time out 
and discover it for yourself. You'll be struck by how much effort the Surinamese put into conserving the town centre. The stones used to build these historic buildings were once used as ballast by merchant ships. You can find out more about the country, its people and the history of Suriname in the Surinamese History Museum at Fort Zeelandia and in the Open Air Museum of New Amsterdam. In 1955, the first stone was laid for the building of the new office of the Hollandse Bank Uni. Built by the architect Nagel, nowadays it houses the offices of the RBTT Bank, the former ABN AMRO Bank. Nagel was one of the prime movers in the development of the town, in which many wooden buildings were replaced by those in stone. His designs have played an important part in the changing townscape of the current town center. Fresh produce arrives from the surrounding districts on a daily basis. There's a wide choice of vegetables, fruit and fish in Suriname. And when you're at the market, they're more than happy to tell you how to prepare the local products. And in the unlikely event of your needing a doctor, Suriname has excellent health care. There are various hospitals and dialysis centers, and the majority of doctors speak both Dutch and English. You'll also find everything at a chemist that you'd expect to find at home. It's really not surprising that more and more tourists and travelers opt to visit Suriname. After all, the quality of life is good in Suriname. The people are friendly, and there's a good standard of medical care and education. The cost of living is probably lower than what you're used to. As a non-resident, you also have the opportunity to buy property in Suriname. Arlene works at Pre Sun Housing International. The company develops qualitative high-class residential projects in and around Paramaribo. Clients can rest assured that they'll receive all the help they need in Holland when buying a house or holiday home in Suriname. Housing International can also help looking after your house as well as with the renting out of your new home. 